guys, on today's video, we take a K1 CT70, put a Lipen 125 in it, and make it a ripper. All right, good morning, fellas. Uh, welcome to Mini Bike Mike's The CT70 Garage. One of the most frequently asked questions I get is, I have a stock bike. The engine needs to be rebuilt for whatever reason. Uh, while I've got it out and having that done, what would it take me to put a life in, in it just to kind of rip around and have some fun uh, while the original stock engine's being rebuilt? How much modifications do I need to do? And can I put the bike back to stock when I'm done and you know want to either sell it or uh, just have an original style bike? So I've never really done a video on that. We've, we've done lots of projects where we've taken um, junk bikes, parts of frames and so forth, and, and we've built a bike with a life and engine. But to the best of my knowledge, we've never done a video where we start with a get it in camera with a mostly stock bike and yank the engine out of it and then put a life in in so let me see if i can turn this camera around i can't seem to turn the camera around with it filming so i'm gonna shut you off i'm gonna turn the camera around so here's the bike we have um i did a video on this on an old channel oh, a few years ago uh, backstory, it, I call it the chicken coop bike. It was really rough. Uh, I bought it for 500 bucks from a friend of mine who literally pulled it from a chicken shed, chicken coop. Uh, it was a nasty, nasty old bike. Um, we got it, you know, we kind of went through it, obviously painted the rims and cleaned some things up just to kind of see how, how nice we could make it look. Now it's sit, sat here and got dusty and dirty over the last few years. Um, but anyway, you can tell we had to modify the headlight ears because they were broke and, and did some things. But we got the bike to run, but man, it, it smoked like a freight train. And the engine, the top end, needs to be uh, rebuilt really bad. Uh, I don't have a title for it. It's not a bike I can ride on the street. So I've just let the thing set. So it's a perfect candidate for the video that we're trying to do. So I've accumulated some parts. So I've got a Lifen or a Lifen clone. I, I think it's a Lifen. They know it's not branded as a Lifen that I bought off of Amazon. Um, 125 cc manual clutch. I went ahead. There should be a carburetor in there, but I think it comes with a really small carburetor, like a 16 millimeter. So I have a 22 millimeter that we may swap on there. Um, I've got a wiring harness that we're going to put in the bike. If you weren't worried about running lights and so forth, you wouldn't have to go to all this. It'd be a much easier swap. Just use the little simple wiring harness. But we're going to go ahead and, and change uh, the lights. The, the stock bike should have a sealed beam. You just can't change that bulb inside there. So we're I went to uh, Beatrice Cycle and picked up a headlight that has a replaceable bulb. Those are the bulbs we're gonna need for headlights and taillights. Um, this is a twist throttle and cable because I am not a fan of the internal throttle setup on a CT70. Because this engine is a manual, we have to swap our K1 over to a, uh, with a clutch cable, so that's just a stock Honda CT70H clutch cable. Um, we're probably going to have to lower the foot pegs to clear the little bit extra width of the engine. Uh, so I've got some spacers and some longer bolts for that. I'm not sure what all is going to be included in this engine kit. It, I, I bought this engine a while back and I don't remember um, what all is in, included in it. But just in case, I have a brand new coil a brand new voltage regulator, and a brand new CDI. Is that everything? I'm sure I'm missing something along the way, but uh, 
Yeah, so we're gonna take this K1 and see if we can't swap it to a to a uh, to a lifen and go rip it a little bit later. Now, according to my phone, it is 8:16 in the morning. I'm really hoping to have this done by lunch. So let's, uh, I'm gonna set you up in a stand cause I'm holding you in my hand. Let's get you in a stand and let's start tearing this thing apart. Before I start, I guess I, I do wanna show you the tools. Uh, <laughs> this is all the tools I have laid out so far. A Phillips screwdriver, a you know straight screwdriver. I have a 10 millimeter, a 12 millimeter and 14 millimeter wrench. And I have a 14, 13, 12 and 10 millimeter 3H drive socket, and I have my little Craftsman ratcheting tool. I don't know. I, we, we, I'm sure there's going to be something else I'm going to need, but uh, just to show you, this doesn't take any kind of special tools. So my plan is is <clears throat> just to let this thing let it roll, So that you can see it in real time. So if this gets super boring, you'll just have to shut her down or skip ahead. And when I go back and do the editing, if it looks, you know, if I took way longer than what I anticipated, well then I will, I'll jump ahead myself because I don't want it to be a four hour video. Let's see, I gotta stop and think about everything I gotta take off. So I just took off the chain guard there. Let's see, we're probably gonna wanna take the seat and so forth off because uh, we're going to need to get the tank out of it to do the wiring harness. I won't be installing a battery in this. The lights will work from the lighting coil on the on the stator, so some of the stock parts over here out of the way. Leave that on there. Pull it out. Let me pull the tank out. Let's get the uh, let's get the exhaust. So let's say let's get the rest of this engine cradle off. It's nice to be back to wrenching on bikes on a little bit of a regular basis. Uh, if you haven't, uh, if you're new to the channel, I've been working quite a bit. <clears throat> kind of came out of retirement to help my kids, and so I haven't actually wrenched a whole lot. <clears throat> Now, when we get to this exhaust, <clears throat> we're gonna have to make some kind of decision on what we wanna do. 
because the uh, the life and engine because it has a little longer stroke and it's a larger bore it pushes the head oh maybe five eighths of an inch half inch of an inch half of an inch toward the front tire so it moves the exhaust forward also so now the back mount doesn't line up so we're either going now a lot of times we're gonna to have to do a couple one of a couple things either make a little bracket to fit on there just to kind of get, uh, bridge that gap a lot of times when I work on these bikes the, the exhaust is shot right here it's broke or rusted through because of that little fiber uh, washer or, or insulator right there and so a lot of times I just cut it clean and add a little piece of pipe in that extends it and uh, that way you can use the original mount. So this one looks to be fairly solid. So um, I don't think I want to cut it. I think what we'll probably wind up doing is, is making a little bracket here on the back. All right, let's get the pegs off. There goes the exhaust, the seat, and uh, all the hardware that was <laughs> left on it. That's all right. Let's see. I'm going to leave that on there because, yeah, we'll pull the cable down through that way. Uh, I need to... I don't think there is any fuel in the tank. Some little wire wire ties on there. Oh well, feel what little bit dripped out didn't look too good. Well, what prompted this video was a uh, recent discussion on. The internet on the website Little Honda, lilhonda.com, L I L H O N D A.com. And there is a fella on there who goes by Kirby, or it's actually got a couple R's or a couple B's or something in there. Uh, and we got into a discussion on just exactly what, what it takes to do this. And I thought, you know what? <clears throat> Rather than discuss it, let's show it. You need to have a couple of these so I don't have to keep swapping sockets around, right? Oh, I've got my brake stuck on it. The engine unplugged. The harness. Got that. Let's see. I need to take the side case off of the engine so I can get the chain off. Get the chain off, I just remove the whole 
just remove the counter sprocket off of the engine. I'm going to go ahead and put it back on just so I don't misplace it or lose it or Okay, got that. Uh-oh. My 14 millimeter socket. What I do with the 14, guys? Hadn't used it yet, had I? Uh-oh. Gonna need a wrench. <clears throat> Let's see. get to that bottom one, I'm probably going to need to take off the brake springs and there we go, and then we need 14 millimeter to hold that side. Why don't you guys come over and hold that? I'm gonna knock it off. Need to move that exhaust so I'm not tripping over it all the, the whole time. Back All right, fellas, out with the old. Eight thirty. We're not doing too bad. I'm unplugging the coil and the brake switch, brake light switch. Uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and take the coil out. Just so I have some place to mount the, the new one. Unplug tail light and brake light. So we've got the back half of the harness loose. Uh, we need to take the key switch out. Light apart. Oh. Oh, there you go. And we'll uh, when we go back to the assembly, we'll as we're assembling, putting, installing the new parts, we'll talk about. 
numbers on bulbs and what we're using and so forth. Yeah, and that is a sealed beam. Uh, let me, in case you don't know what I'm talking about, on these headlights, you cannot pull out the bulb. It is non-replaceable. The wires are soldered. And then the bulb is, as you can see, I don't know if you can see, it's a pretty good size in there. I have cut those out and welded in a, uh, welded in a bulb holder for something else and got to work, but at this point, it's just easier to, uh, to purchase a uh, replacement that will work correctly. So I'm just gonna take some time here and unplug everything. We're gonna pull the old, we're gonna pull the stock wiring harness completely out of the bike. I got here one more. There we go. Sorry, didn't want, didn't want to step in front of you guys. I get in front of the camera enough the way it is. <laughs> I'm hooked on the horn wires. There we go. And all that other wiring, this is from the speedometer and uh, the horn and the uh, front brake switch. We'll leave all that in there. Come on, pop out. Okay. And there is the stock harness. And I think that's everything. Oh, nope. You know what? We need to take the, uh, the brake cable off because we are the, the rear brake cable because we are going with a uh, going with a clutch remember so we're going to need to use that brake lever for the clutch <laughs> Come on out of there. A lot of threads. They put a lot of adjustment on there. All right, there's that. Pull that up out of there. Pull it out. Take it out. Okay. Is that everything we need to take off the bike? I would normally change the rear sprocket. Uh, this, I think, should have a 35 tooth rear sprocket. Yes, it does. It's got a, a 35T. Normally, I would replace that to a 33T, but like other things in the world today, I can't find them, you know? I, I don't know what's going on with, uh, you know what, we forgot to take the, uh, the throttle apart that's one thing else we need to do we're going to switch that to a twist throttle i can't find 33 tooth rear sprockets for these so we're just gonna we're just gonna leave the 35 tooth on that dude doesn't look like it's ever been off of there
right, got the grip off. Let's see. Get on the other side. Here, there's a little, little screw that we have to take out. First, we're gonna wipe it down some since I got it all nasty. Wow, that thing was super nasty. Where people have tried to lubricate it over the years or whatever. Come up out of there. It's kind of warm in here. I'm a sweaty mess. As soon as we get this uh, disassembled, we're going to take a short break and let Mike. Self cleaned up, and then we'll get ready for the uh, assembly. Why is that not coming off of there? Oh, it is. There. All right, there we go. Now we should be able to probably pull it down through the other way easier. Hopefully, get it past the horn button. And there we go. So now we're disassembled, 840. So guys, I'm gonna shut you down just for a second, get kind of cleaned up a little bit, um, pick up some of these, the parts so I don't uh, lose anything. And uh, like all the throttle parts I wanna put in a bag and keep everything. So uh, let me get everything picked up and put away and I'll bring you right back. I did forget one last part. That is the, I need to take the speedometer off because we are actually going to change the bulbs in the speedometer to 12 volt bulbs also. I probably should take the headlight bucket all the way off, but I'm going to try and do it without taking it off. And I'm working with a little tighter room than normally would because the fork gears had to be shortened. The headlight is pushed back up closer to the speedometer. So I'm actually working with a little less room than what you normally would. I'm guessing someone at some point wrecked the bike, bent the fork gears. I'm going to actually take the uh, speedometer cable loose at the wheel. And I'll show you why here in just a second. Because I know you're going, why don't you just take it loose up there? Well, I'll show you why. It all goes back to those shortened fork gears. <laughs> Come on. Be 
because I had to, uh, well, son of a gun. Because I had to shorten the fork gears, rather than have the old broken pieces hanging out there that I couldn't mount a headlight on, uh, it pushed the speedometer so close, I'm sorry, pushed the headlight bucket so close to the speedometer that there was no place for the speedometer cable to go. So I actually had to cut a notch in the back of the headlight bucket to make clearance for the speedometer cable. And by doing that, it's almost impossible to get in there to get the speedometer cable loose from the speedometer. If I remember right, I had to put the cable on, then feed the headlight bucket up through the cable and go that route. All right, so we're loose there. Get them off without taking that cover off. I'm gonna have to take that cover off, aren't I? Yeah, I got it. I'm gonna take a little more than what I anticipated. Hang on just a second. And there again, if you're not titling a bike, you're not going to ride it on the street, you don't need lights, you don't have to do any of this, but I thought it would be best to show everything in case somebody does need to do this, does have a bike that's titled. Okay, so... 1445s is the bulb number, the 12 volt version. We're going to need three of them. They just push down and twist. There's two little pins, just like any, any regular light bulb. So there's that one. What we've got up here is a the K1s actually have a neutral indicator light. K0s don't. Everything after that has a neutral indicator light. So you got a neutral indicator bulb, you got a high beam indicator bulb, and you've got just a, a backlight for the speedometer itself to light it up. Okay, I am going to shut you guys down. I'm just going to reverse my process here. Uh, I need to, I'm going to go ahead and put that back together since that's the only thing I need to do to that speedometer was change those three bulbs. So no need for you guys to sit and watch that. 
it is 854. So let me put that speedometer back on. All right, I think we're ready to start going back together. The first thing I'm going to put in is the wiring harness. Now, this isn't the harness that I wanted. Um, Trail Buddy makes a harness called a TB515. That's their part number. They, they have a harness that uh, we worked kind of together. They contacted me and, and uh, we, we kind of sorted out what, what we needed to have just a simple harness that was plug and play for uh, life and engines in a K0 or K1 bike, something without turn signals. They have a harness that's what they call a universal harness. It's not particularly made to, uh, for any one bike. It, it literally is a universal harness. And it comes with everything, wires for electric start, turn signals, and you know everything you can think of. And uh, for a long time, I would take that harness, cut it apart, and uh, rebuild it using just the wiring I needed for a like a K0 bike. And Trail Buddy watched me do that a few times and then said, you know, why don't we just come up with a harness so people don't have to do that. And so they did. Well, unfortunately, you know, like other things, it's not available right now. Um, I did talk to them. They have got them ordered. Hopefully they'll have them. This, it, we're in August of 2021 right now. Hopefully they'll have them here in a couple months. But I had to take one of the universal harnesses again and modify it to fit my needs. So that's what this is. So this is the harness I'm putting in here is Trail Buddy's part number TB422. And it's the universal harness. And then I, prior to starting the video, took a little time and modified it to where I believe it is pretty much what you would buy if you bought the TB515. I think I have, I used to have a couple of those. I've, I ha I've used them all on builds, but uh, I, I'm pretty sure I have this harness close to that TB515. So if you buy that, it's it's pretty it's almost plug and play. Okay, so that's wiring up there. So back here, you've got a brake switch, which needs 12 volt power in the red. This red wire, there's a red and a green wire for the brake switch. So the harness uses black. Uh oh. I've got a problem. All right. Okay, one wire is red, one's green and yellow. The green and yellow will plug right into the green and yellow of the harness. My blacks, or my power, both have male fittings. So I'm going to have to come up with a connector to get that to work. So give me just one second. All right, because I don't want to hack up the harness that's in the bike because, you know, if we want to go back to stock. And at this point, I'm not going to hack up the harness that I've just installed in the bike. I'm just going to make a jumper. I'm going to take two female ends you've not used these little solder connector things, they actually are pretty slick. So 
just get the bearings where the solder's at. Melt it. Okay, so I'm gonna let that cool off for just a second and then we will put that in as a jumper between those two wires that had the male ends. All right, I've got my jumper installed, so my brake light switch is hooked up. Uh, I've got my tail light wires back here. The green and yellow are the brake light. So you just plug in the green and yellow from the harness, match wire color to wire color. And then there is a brown wire that plugs into the brown wire, which is the running light or tail light. All right, so those. Now, I need to open up the engine box. Uh, I've got coil wires here. I've got voltage regulator and CDI wires. So I need to find out what I have in the box versus what parts I need to pull from my, my stash on the table. So let me get you set up to where we're looking at the box. Actually, you know what? We'll just turn it. Find the box. The last one of these I bought was a uh, 16 millimeter. No, this is a 20, PZ20. So we may just go ahead and go. Let's see, no. We're not going to use it because it's got a choke that this is like for an ATV or something. This has got a it's got a spring loaded choke lever you're supposed to put a cable on. So we're not I don't think we're going to use this carburetor in this application. We'll go with the carburetor, the extra one that we bought. Let's see what else we have in here. falling off. All right, we've got the engine. All right, we'll come back to that in just a second. Let's see what kind of parts they included with us. All right, so it did come, it did come with a CDI. It comes with <laughs> broken intake parts. The little plastic insulator is broken half. Engine cover. Intake. Kickstarter. Ship lever. And some hardware. So we do not have a coil, nor did it come with the, the single, the simple wiring harness that they do a lot of times, so. Okay. So that particular engine that I'm gonna put a link to came with the engine, kickstarter, ship lever, side cover, it came with a CDI, it came with an intake, it came with a carburetor, and then it came with some hardware. Uh, unfortunately, in this one, we had some, there's some damage. So, we've got plenty of spares, but that's a bummer if you don't have spares. Yeah, see, the, the plastic insulator is in multiple pieces. Not sure what happened there. So, okay, uh, I think we need to put the coil in, don't we? So, that's the first thing.
and I will look up these parts and put links to all this stuff. You have to pick up. So I need to, well, you know what, there should be a 10 millimeter. Uh, yep, there's one there. And we're just going to bolt it in the same spot that it was bolted originally. I think I'm going to go ahead and plug my plug my two wires in first. I've got a green ground wire that goes to a green ground wire in my harness. And then the black and gold to the black and gold. Alright, so that's plugged in. So let's... Well, having a hard time hitting a hole. Use all my tools. There we go. We might need a deep well 10 millimeter for that. Because that had pretty long threads on it. And you don't have to uh, actually mount the coil. It doesn't need to be grounded. If it's got two wires like this one did, the green and the black and gold, the green is actually ground. So the body of the coil does not need to be grounded. Uh, if your coil only has one wire, then a hot wire, then yes, then it's going to need to be grounded to the frame. All right, these are the wires that they're going to plug into the engine. So we need to make sure they are down here to where we can get to the engine. Okay. Now let's put the uh, Put the engine back up in it. What do you say? I put a engine back up in it. The engine comes with a little, this one had a little red plug over the vent cover. Make sure you take that off so the engine can breathe. I don't personally mess with putting a, it actually has a tube here, so we'll put it on there. I was gonna say, I didn't think it, I didn't think it came with a vent tube, but it's actually mounted to the bike right here. So we'll go ahead and plug that in. I wasn't gonna take the time to find one if it didn't have it, but since it's got it right there, this would be a little bit easier if we didn't have the daggone brake pedal on the bike we're gonna see if we can work around it I don't know we might have to take the brake pedal off of it yeah I think we're going to I'll slide my lift up a little bit You know what, just for to make ease of doing this, I'm gonna pull the brake pedal off.
get that out of our way. And these lifens are just a direct bolt in, or should be. I have had uh, where the uh, the old original engine was the bolts were cranked down the frame has been pushed apart so we might have to we might have to do some tweaking here to get it to go This one seems, seems to be particularly tight. All right, hang on a second. Let's... All right, I'm gonna shut you down just for a second and answer that phone. All right, sorry for the uh, delay for the phone call. It's uh, 9.26. Uh, I did have to take a, uh, I just take a large Phillips screwdriver. Uh, the frame was all pinched from where they had cranked down on the uh, engine bolts for the original engine. Um, hell, I may have done it, because did I have that engine out of that bike? I can't remember if I had the engine out of that bike or not, or out of this bike or not. Um, and then I also, I, I loosened up the swing arm bolt uh, back here just to kind of, and was able to stick a screwdriver in the hole of the frame and just kind of tweak it, bend it out a little bit. And I've got the, uh, I've got the bolts in there. Got the engine in. Let's see, put a, put a lock washer. Does that have a washer on it? I don't think it actually had a washer on it. We'll put one here. going to put the brake pedal back on until we get our pegs put on. Let's go ahead and uh, plug in our wires. So this engine has two different wiring harnesses. It's actually got uh, one for running and lights and then it's got a separate harness that is all the um, gear indicators. Let you know what gear it's in. Uh, the only thing we're going to use is the neutral indicator. Sorry, trying to get all my stuff in a row over here. How does that work? Okay, this has got to come up. There. It's got these little rubber grommets. protect the wires. And it is not going on there. There we go. I think I got that backwards. I think it goes like this. Spending way too much time putting a grommet in. All of a sudden, things are not working for me here, guys. All I'm trying to do is put this little rubber. There we go. That'll work. Uh, what size sprocket did this come with? A 14T, and I don't, you know what? I don't think I have any other other ones, so we're just going to go with that. But let's plug our engine in first. So. Um, this wiring harness had wires for a kill switch. We're not gonna use that, so we'll just push those inside. Uh, this is all just plug and play. Yellow to yellow. 
white to white. Uh, green. Oh, daggone it. Here we have another. We have two, uh, two males. So we're going to have to modify that. Black and red to black and red. And we do have one discrepancy here. Oh, no, we got two. No, that's, that's female. We got a uh, blue and white of the engine, which is standard, but our harness has a red and white. But they go together. So, guys, I got to make another dual female connector so I can connect these two ground wires. So you saw me do that before. I'm not going to take the time to show you again. So I got to do the exact same thing. All right, so I've made a little jumper for that. So our ground is now connected. And then the last thing I had to do was uh, this one single green and red wire plugs into this connector and it just connects to the one green and red wire that's in this wiring harness. All the other wires will show you when you're in first, second, third, or fourth. We don't have any kind of indicator for that, so those aren't being used. Uh, next, I, I want to put the chain on. I'm going to see how close we are. I'm going to redneck this here. I'm going to take, I took the chain off the back sprocket. I put it on the front sprocket. And I rolled it on. And it needs to be tightened a little bit, but that ain't horrible. So we'll, so we got the chain on. So that lets us put this side case on. What did we do with the side case that came with the engine? There's that. And hopefully, in this package of broken hardware, they sent bolts to put it on. my little ratchet. There he is. Nope, must not have it lined up. Right. Not a long enough bolt for that one. Two different lengths. Huh. I'm curious what's going on here. The bottom front one seems like it should be long enough. Is the hole not threaded? It is. It just takes a longer bolt than what they gave us. Uh, let's see. Will this one go into the top? It won't go into the top. So. gave us three three bolts for the side case but that one is too short to go up front where the uh, up underneath where the shift lever is so I'm just gonna grab one out of my tool bin my parts bin So let's put the fuel tank in it. Now, the carburetor we're going to use is only going to have one line. And our tank has two. So I'm actually going to block off the regular line and we're just going to use the reserve line. So I'm going to take a few minutes and do that and then I'll bring you back. 
For those that are wondering what I do there, I just take a little piece of quarter inch fuel line, put it on, and then I just cut a little nub of quarter inch solid round bar and stick in there, spray it with a little WD-40 so it slides in and then it'll, I've never had a problem with any of them ever leaking. Let's see, so I'm put one of these fuel lines on back on here. if we can feed that we're going to need to attach something to that so that we can uh, feed that down through there you know what I wonder if we can I got hang on so I think I have some little fuel shutoffs might be too much to fit down through that hole though. Problem is if you don't have a long enough fuel line, it's hard to get the tank in there and get the fuel line fed through and be able to get it out. So I'm trying to add some length to the fuel line. So I can get it fed down in there. Until we should be good. Okay. I'm going to start going back together with this thing. I guess we kind of already have, but. Really gonna Look too bad. All right, so we've got that. Let's uh, tackle the fuel or the clutch cable real quick. Because I wonder, I don't know if this is a uh, bigger end. No, that actually fits in the hole there. That's awesome. I was wondering if we were going to have to modify the perch at all for that to to go and since these lifens are a just a copy of the Honda you can use the Honda cable
and it should all work as it's supposed to. All right, clutch is on. Uh, I'm going to take that off of there. I know this is going to sound silly, but all these, they put all these little uh, things to catch wiring or whatever. I, I like to clean the engine up and take those things off. I'm talking about these little doodads here. They have them all over the, the life and engines. I save them. I, I use them for, I you know, maybe alter them a little bit and use them to hold different things. But I don't need one right there where they, why they had one right there. Yeah, get on there. Okay, that. Our spark plug reaches fine, so that's good. Let's put the. Let's see where I want it going to happen with our exhaust. Make a, I don't want to cut this exhaust, so we're going to make a little bracket there. Uh, you know, one thing I didn't grab was an exhaust gasket. Dig through my box of parts here. Bear with me for one second. So there is a little crush gasket that goes up in here. Sometimes I put a little grease on it to hold it in place. Oh. And this is the, I've talked about this before, I, this is not a design of Hondas that I like. It's got these little split collars that hold this exhaust together. On the uh, early ones, I think by the later models, they had changed that. Holding it all together, it really takes more hands than what I got. Come on. <laughs> Don't fall out. Get up in there. All right, now I gotta get the mounting collar turned without dropping everything out. Hey, I think we did it.
and you can see there just how much difference that's the difference in length from the stock engine to the life and engine and same way with down here this one doesn't line up that one's not a big deal but obviously I, I'm gonna have to get something to mount there so I've got to work on that but let's go ahead and finish up a few other things first see what we have to do to pegs. Normally you have to space them down. Well, they've changed the uh, they've changed the way the case is designed. These this set will bolt right in place. I do have a, a bent tab. I don't think it's going to be a problem though. So let's get some hardware here. to space it down. That's what I've had to do before because the, uh, the engine was slightly wider, slightly uh, different configuration, and it would catch the pegs right there. But uh, I wonder if they didn't realize, somebody along the line hasn't realized that, and they changed the design slightly, so you don't have to do that now. which is awesome. Uh, you know what, before I put the pegs on, we're gonna need to put the shift lever on because we, it won't clear the peg, I don't believe. It'll clear it once, the pegs will clear once the shift lever's on, but we can't get the shift lever on it with the pegs on it. So, nope, I gotta back up just for a second. Maybe I'll just take this one out and slide it. There we go. Now with that bolt up there. Yeah, that's fine. Let's see. That's going to bolt right there. So I'm going to want to rotate that up some. Now let's see what happens. It's awfully tight. See how that point, that shift shift lever is, is going to be touching that uh, foot peg? I think I'm going to take that back off and just go to the grinder and just round that off. Be right back. Okay, so I've got that, uh, just took a little hand grinder and ground that down a little bit. So we've got plenty of clearance now. So let's go ahead, see what kind of trouble we're going to have putting the engine guard on. Because quite honestly, Trail 70 is not a Trail 70 without the engine guard, in my opinion. Hang it from the bolt up here on each side.
got a little bit of clearance there so we're not rubbing. Let's see. that on let's look at our brake pedal now come on get on there all right we're gonna have to Let's just take it all the way out. <laughs> oh my god, come on. up there. Get a pair of pliers. There's a little pin from your brake switch and the spring has got to go through that pin. You're going to go through the hole in the pin like that. Now we're not using the hand brakes. We've got this piece here that's just kind of floating. I'm going to take a zip tie just so it's not rattling around. And I'm going to zip tie it to the rest of the brake pedal. Just to keep it from rattling. All right, so we'll have to adjust our brake. Uh, it clears the engine. It is tucked out a little bit. We could take and uh, put a pipe wrench on it and bend out the, uh, 
the brake pedal just a little bit so your foot's not catching just the very edge of it. We'll ride it first before we make any of those types of adjustments. Let's see, let's put a, uh, we got a carburetor. Looking for a screwdriver to, I've got this cover on the intake, or on the head here for the intake. And I think the carburetor that I bought has, should have all the hardware that I need that was broken other one. Fuel filter, yeah, there's the insulator, intake, air filter. Okay. This opened up here. On there, so we need to when you put this together, there's an O ring on the carburetor, there's an O ring on the insulator. Make sure you don't put the O rings together. Now the last one we did, this carburetor, I don't think they in included bolts that were long enough to go through all this. Oh, they did this time. But they did not include bolts for the, uh, to bolt the intake down. So. Maybe the other kit has that. Okay, that looks good. slide out. Now before we mount the thing on there, oh there actually that's, let's do that up for there. Hmm. Let's see what the uh, kit for the other carburetor has. That's the right gasket, and we've got a couple melting bolts. So, put the gasket down. So between the two, I was able to have enough hardware to do everything. These seem kind of long. Hopefully there's enough hold is deep enough to thread all that in. We're getting there guys, I haven't checked the time in a while, we're probably at least a couple hours in.
it's been a while since I've done this, so I'm not as smooth as what I was a couple years ago when I was doing it on a regular basis. I'm having to, I'm not on autopilot, you know. I'm having to stop and actually think about some things. I used to be, do it with my eyes closed. <laughs> Feels pretty good. We're gonna go with that for now. Okay, so we've got all that. We'll worry about putting the last couple bolts up here. We'll need to adjust our brake when we see where that's at. Let's uh, do the why we need to do the wiring in the headlight, and we need to put this twist throttle on. Let's go ahead and knock out the headlight. Sorry guys. All right. So the first thing we have here is I got two wires that go to the horn. One's red and one's green. There should be a wire coming from the horn button that is green that just gets connected to the green wire. Hang on just a second. I'm gonna find a small screwdriver for okay and then the red wire of the horn it needs power hot power so the black wires in the harness are 12 volt when the engine's running so we'll plug a black one so our horn is plugged in We've got a red wire and a green and yellow wire for the front brake light switch. So the red wire needs power. So we'll go back to the black one of the harness and plug it, plug it in maybe. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Stab myself here. Plug in. Yeah, I guess it's plugged in. All right, and then there should be a green and yellow in our harness that plugs into the green and yellow of the brake switch. And things just aren't working for me today. Go. So that's the brake switch hooked in. Okay, what else do we have? This group of three wires are the headlight switch up here. Power needs to be fed into the brown and red, and we're going to use the yellow wire. This is the, the yellow is powered straight from the stator. And so we'll plug that in to feed our headlight switch. Okay, I'm guessing that's plugged in. And then we need our headlight. But before we do our headlight, guys, we need to swap out a bulb. Let's take you over here. Back you up. All right, so this is uh, the headlight, and it comes with a 6-volt bulb, but we need a 12-volt bulb, and it is an A3603.
there is a little point right there on the top and there's a little point a little knot on the all right and those line up and then just plug your but you got to find out it's a specific pattern of those three pins they'll only go together one way there we go cover back on. All right, let's go put it back on the bike. Sorry, not uh, doing very well here. Okay, so those three wires that came down from the headlight switch, the blue just connects to the blue. And the white goes to the white for the low beam. The blue is the high beam. Okay, and then there is a green ground wire that plugs to any of the solid green grounds in the harness. That's our headlight. Now, the last set of wires that we need to plug in all go to the speedometer. The blue one gets connected to the blue of the headlight. So that's the, when you put it on high beam, it not only turns on the high beam of the headlight, it turns on the high beam indicator on the, um, on the speedometer. Uh, there are two just solid green grounds. So we'll hook those to, there's a double female ground here that we'll just hook those to. So those are hooked up. Okay. There is a red power button, so it needs power from a black wire in the harness. And then we have the green and red, which is the neutral indicator. And then the harness, it's a green and white. Okay. I am one power button, power wire short. I need, this is a, the last wire here is a brown and red, and it needs to hook to a black wire of the harness, and I am out. So I'm going to have to make a connector. For right now, I'm going to skip that. Actually, I still got, I have the brown wires that go back to the tail light. I still have to feed that too. All right, I got to make a jumper. To get, to get one more black power wire from the harness to the power of the tail light and the power of the illumination for the speedometer. So let me, uh, let me take care of that real quick. Well, I got a little bit behind, uh, had a couple uh, things I had to take care of, phone calls and so forth. It is now 1059. Uh, I did a couple things off camera. Just kind of speed. I went ahead and finished that headlight, the wiring that I needed to do there. Uh, grommet, brackets. I made a little thing right here so that the exhaust is nice and tight. I think we're down to putting the twist throttle on this thing. And I just buy these little cheap $10, $12 eBay kits that come with a, uh, the cable. Now, I think the cable on this particular kit is a little bit long.
but it will work for what we're doing here. Come on, put the spring on. And I really have no idea how long this video has gotten. Uh, I sincerely apologize if it's gotten a little out of hand. Let's see. That needs to go that direction. That goes on there. how I want to feed that up through there yet so it might not be the prettiest thing we can always reroute it later I'm feeling a tad bit rushed um, this throttle has a kill button on it there was a kill plug-in on there so I hate to get rid of the wire and I was going to cut it off but I don't think I will I think I'll leave it on there. We'll just tape it off to the side or something. Maybe later I'll come back and, and actually hook that up. Take that apart. Gotta get our cable. Thread that on there. Uh, save a little bit of thread to put the lock nut back on. Like that. That's actually going to go this way. There is a little locking pin in the top part. See that little pin that sticks out there? And that actually fits in the groove up here. So Oh no. <laughs> no. There we go. I didn't think I had myself enough room to put the put it on. I dropped it right down there by my foot. I see it. I'll get it in a second. This is one of those things that takes more hands than what you got. Oh yeah, that's gonna work well. Sorry if you're just looking at my back. I'm... Well, I thought that pin would fit in that groove, but apparently on this one it doesn't. Still gives us clearance to pull our brake. And we can actually rotate it a little bit farther. That there, that's better. All right. Okay.
that gets rid of that kill wire for right now. Dudes, are we done? I went ahead and plugged in the CDI and the voltage regulator. That's the spare one. Had a couple of them. Uh, <laughs> boy, you make a mess doing all this, though. So, it's what? 11, 1105. I believe we are ready. to see if it will fire up. All right, I'm gonna put you back over here in the stand. I'm gonna take a couple minutes and clean all these tools up and put all my junk away. We'll put some gas in it, let the table down, and let's see if it fires up. Well, it's uh, 11, 12 a.m. So what was that, about three hours? Eight, nine, 10, 11, yeah, three hours. I put a little gas in it. Let's see if it'll even start. When I start it, the headlights, the headlights should come on because I've got the headlight wired direct. Let's see, I've got key on. Fuel is on. So the headlight is on. Neutral indicator light is on, and you can also see that the uh, illumination for the speedometer is on. And then the tail light. What if we have brake lights? So we should have a high beam light now. Yeah, the high beam goes down. Did I just turn it off? Well, I think it's time to take it outside for a rip. I think we need to go have a little more fun than this. I'm riding more. 
Guys, thanks for joining me on today's video. Uh, it was a lot of fun. Um, I will put links in the description for all the parts we used and uh, all the processes we went through. So thanks for joining me. We'll see you on the next video.